Hello. Hey. <laughs> Welcome to Know Your Character, Show Your Character. I'm your host, Alex Liddell. <laughs> um, in, I'm a, a fantasy romance writer. Uh, my books have generated over seven figures. I've been both traditional and now indie. I switched from traditional to indie because I like money. Uh, and uh, things to know about the next 45 minutes. So this is going to be a workshop, so there will be quite a bit of interaction and, uh, and working with both uh, the examples I have up front and your own character. This is, it, I know it was listed as a craft basic. I consider it craft advanced because the things we're not covering are wants and needs and uh, wants and needs as you know, the, we know or should know are, is how you create a character for your plot. I am not going into the details of wants and needs, so I want to be clear, if you are in the audience right now, and when I say characters, wants and needs, and you don't know what it is, and you think this workshop is going to take care of everything you need to know about characters for you, it won't. You need to go read up on wants and needs. Now, for most people here, um, I imagine you've heard more about wants and needs. So this is, uh, this is about fine-tuning craft. Uh, and this is about, our goal is to both get ideas for your character, but a lot is that how do we show facts and uh, facets and history about your character to the audience without ever stopping to do a Miss America introduction, which really, and having all that expedition, exposition, you know, without saying, and here comes Sky, Sky is a Chihuahua, Sky is an evil dog. Um, <laughs> Sky is actually a, a, a very nice dog, and she just happens to dislike me. Um, <laughs> Uh, and going on, you know, Sky is six years old. Sky was born and raised in rural Alaska. I'm making this up, but the idea was there's oftentimes lots of backstory to characters, and how do we show a lot of that without ever stopping our story? So those are the goals of what you'll ha be able to do at the end of these 45 minutes. You may have get some extra ideas for your character, but a lot of it is going to get skills to show uh, all of those aspects of your character without going into exposition and without uh, breaking up your narrative. All right, we're going to do a warm up. Character's name. I've got a character that I've just made up. His name is James Rogers. He introduces himself as Jim. However, his mom uh, calls him Jamie, which he hates, but she won't stop doing. Uh, at work, his subordinates call him Captain Rogers or Sir. His friends from college call him Captain America uh, from ROTC, which he finds incredibly annoying, and they keep doing it. Uh, his, uh, his high school best friends still call him Big J, which he secretly loves because it reminds him of that time um, uh, during high school when he used to play football and he thought his body was invincible. And lately, more and more, he's getting used to a new name and being called by this new name, uh, which is Mickey's dad. And that's very new for him to be known as that. All right. Take a minute. I want you to come up with at least four names others use for your character and how your characters feel about it. <laughs> All right? That, that's, let's bring it back. Uh, could I have somebody share, uh, especially, yes, please. So what's your character's actual real full name? Gabriella Prince. Her, okay, that's from her mom, which she hates. And now her ex-boyfriend insists on calling her that. Okay, what's another name that she has? Okay, Gabe, which is how she introduces herself and what the love interest calls. Is she how she introduces herself to? Okay, what other name? Dad, 
Oh, I really like that. So her her coworkers and call her Gabby, and uh, I have to repeat what you said because we've got an online audience. Her coworkers call her Gabby, and the fascinating thing about this is when I first heard her say that, I'm like, well, okay. So what's about that? Gabby sounds fine until we hear the second part, which is she is really upset with herself because she wants to be called Gab Ga Gabe and she hasn't had the um, inside it in her to tell her coworkers that and to insist on that. Didn't that just like create such a new dimension to this character from just that name difference? Mm -hmm. And one more? Uh, Jean's sister, yeah. Okay, and her sister has a, a, a love nickname, which is G. So thank you. I loved seeing that new, brand new dimension that we just added to that character was such a quick and efficient uh, tactic that we put into the writing. Part two, I am moving us along because there's a lot of material and this class is a longer class that we're condensing. What a character or what a person says about somebody else often tells us more about them than it does about the somebody else. In this exercise, I'm going to show you a picture. And then I am going to read how four different characters describe what they see in the picture. After each one, I'm going to ask you to shout out what you think about the person who is speaking. I am, after that, I will show you a different picture and ask your character to describe it. And when you turn to your, pa uh, to your uh, partner, we'll see if your partner gets characteristics of your character just based on the way they are describing a scene. All right? So that's where we're going with this. So this is our picture. All right, that's our picture. Let's see what we can learn about characters by the way they describe that scene. 35-year-old female found supine in cardiac arrest, penetrating trauma noted behind left scapula. Clothes are blood soaked, wound no longer bleeding. Assistily was confirmed in two leads. No resuscitation efforts were initiated. Time of death, 4.32 p.m. The body was left in the custody of the local PD. Who's talking? Paramedic. Adult? Yeah. Educated? Professional? Awesome. We didn't need to show uniform. We didn't need to show him coming in. We didn't need to give a little introduction of the fact that this guy is a professional smart guy. Not only is he a paramedic, but he actually knows what he's doing as a paramedic. 35 years old. Mary Bell was only 35 years old. Sorry for the spelling. Bless her heart, but I knew something like this was coming. Kept telling her to just forget John to move out of the city, but she thought she knew best. All the young kids think they know best. <laughs> a debutante? All the young kids think they know best. You think she's young? You think old? I'm sorry, I thought debutante was somebody. I watched too much Bridget and don't worry. <laughs> okay. And what makes you think South? Bless her heart. What makes her think this is what makes you guys think this is somebody old and not young? All the young kids. All right. Do you think this is uh, a neighbor probably close by, right? You think this is somebody who minds their own business? <laughs> All right, so we got a lot of, look, we, got, we know the age, we know where they're from. We know their personality of minding, of minding their own business, right? All, all from what they said. All right, let's do another one. The lady was lying there bleeding and no one was doing anything to help. I told dad we should bandage her up, and he just yelled at me to go home. That isn't right. Child? You think teenager? Why do you think teenager? What, what, 
you think a teenager would be a little more? Okay, so you think a teenager, somebody who thinks child, why do you think child? You thought child, why? Yep, yeah, right. So the, he was upset by dad's yelling, right? Um, I think of probably if I was writing it, if I really wanted to show teenage age, what I might do is I might show some rebellion towards dad. Uh, that might be a, a, an indicator of, a, of that. Um, but interesting, this, this kid uh, saw a lady bleeding and he, did he run away or did he think something should be done? It should be done. Does that tell us something about this child? Yeah. How about the type of neighborhood this child lives in that he sees this type of stuff? Yeah. Then, yeah, and what did the dad didn't say, oh my God, are you okay, let's talk about this. Dad's reaction is get your ass back home. Again, didn't show you who it was walking in, didn't tell you where he lived or what type of situation he's in, you figured it out from how he described it. Last one. She was happy, you know. She always wanted to die. Every day she kept saying that over and over and over, begging for it, begging everybody for it. And now she has what she always wanted all along. I even let her wear her favorite dress. I wanted her to be happy. Yeah, yeah, it's killer, abuser. Why, why do you think he's an abuser? The way he's talking about her, putting his emotions. I have to repeat stuff you guys say into the mic, so don't mind me. So the fact that she kept saying it over and over that she wanted it, if we believe him, and if not, that is that language a little repetitive? Do we think this is somebody mentally uh, all there? No, not all there. So we've just found a killer without ever seeing him, just by how he was talking and describing things. This is cool, guys. Does he think he did a good thing or a bad thing? Good thing? He's, yeah. He, he thinks, yeah. He, he's generous. Why is he generous? Yeah, what she wanted. Yeah, look, he, he even let her wear her favorite dress. And back to abuser, he let her wear a dress. So what do we think about his attitude towards partners or women in general? Controlling? Narcissistic, right? Again, no Miss America introduction, just the way he's talking. All right, I'll give you a couple minutes. Uh, you are, I'm going to show you a picture. I want you to pretend that, and this, um, this picture is the location. This is taking place on a beach. So I want you to imagine that um, your character, for whatever reason, is either on the you know, on the beach and can see this in the distance or looking out the window or whatever. So your character isn't looking at a picture, they're looking at the actual scene. Um, if, you write, uh, if you write fantasy or the, it's a contemporary picture, just I imagine they're wearing different clothes if you need to, if you're like, well, this wouldn't happen in my world because I'm science fiction and they wear different clothes. Um, so just uh, go with that. And they are, they are talking, uh, either they're talking on the phone, if it's contemporary, or to a person next to them. So they're going to say something to describe, to about what they're seeing. Ready? Here's your picture. <laughs> I'll give you a couple minutes. Your character, your character has walked out, he sees this stuff going on. And your character is going to make a comment about what they're seeing to somebody else. And I want to see, think about what you want your partner to know about your character. And when you read what they say, we'll ask your partner 
what, you know, what did they figure out about your character, and we'll see if it matches. All right, guys, let's bring it in. Uh, can somebody share? Okay, now before you share your description, what, without giving us the answer, what are you hoping we'll find out? You can say something like, I'd like you to figure out their age, or I'd like you to figure out their occupation. What are you hoping? Occupation, occupation what else? Occupation, general age range, gender. gender. Will we be able? Will you think we'll be able, okay? All right. So, all right. Let's let's hear it. Let me let me give you a, a microphone. Testing. Yep. All right. Go ahead. All right. So I will say I'm blank. Uh, I'm so and so. Even though it was an exercise they do every semester, it never gets easier. Coming up at 5 o'clock, we will be talking to one of the men to share the experience he had and what it meant to him. Okay. Thank you. So what, what do we think? Uh, what do we think about this character? Reporter? Why? Because they're, they're looking for the facts. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, anything else, any other personality traits about this reporter? Lives in a college town. Why? Semester. We do every semester. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh, interesting. Thank you, updater. Um, <laughs> um, or I was also found it interesting. It never gets easier. I'm kind of curious what she means. Never gets easier. Talking to these guys never gets easier uh, because why? Are they? Does she feel bad for them? Are they rude to her? They mean? Or does it just getting up at five in the morning doesn't get easier? And that's her primary problem. I'm curious. So, hold on. Well, so let's let's find out the answer. Um, what uh, what did you want us to know? That she was a reporter, a television reporter, and she was doing a story. That okay, oh okay, that she was interviewing them. That she had teased the audience to come back and watch the show. All right, um, anything she could have said to. So I did not get in that that this was a television that there was a camera involved. If you wanted me to know that this is somebody who has a, who has a television, what might, what might she say uh, to clue you in that this is a television reporter? What is it? Go, go, okay, good evening, viewers. Sure, I mean, that is, this is coming, coming to you live, sure. How about, give me something a little more subtle. Are we, okay, she can ask, are we rolling? Mm -hmm. She might comment on uh, getting good side or getting or the light, you know, the light is good, the light is not, you know, is not bouncing off the lens, or you know, we always get up at five in the morning, but at least, you know, the the light is good for the film. Uh, cut and with cut. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Uh, all right. Can I hear one more? All right. Uh, first, what would you like? What, what are you hoping we'll figure out? Job. Past experiences. Okay. Uh, age. Should be. Age. Okay. Gender. Don't maybe. Okay. The team was clearly made of noobs. They screamed at the chill of the first wave. They hadn't used their sense of hearing to guess at the rushing water. He was happy those training exercises were long behind him. He'd be pissed if he, was ever if he ever let himself be tied up and half drowned again. He knew firsthand how useful the training was, but... It, 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 true, but that's okay. He's talking to himself. Sure, I'll give it to you. Um, I'll give it to you, but let's see. Tell me, what do we know? Veteran, drill instructor. Mm-hmm. Older, 
What'd you say? Cynical. Why cynical? Okay, yep, what words did he use? Noob. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if I had, how about, what if this had been so, um, somebody who was going to try out for the team? Instead of, so, so let's say somebody in the exact same position, but instead of being the drill instructor who's been through this, this is somebody who is a wanna, like who wants to do this. What words would he say when the first, so let's say the exact same thing happened, you know, the first wave crashed and there was screaming. What words might he use to describe what's happening instead of saying the noob screamed? I think I made a mistake. <laughs> I hope it's warmer. What, how he might refer to them instead of calling them noobs? Might be recruits, brothers, brothers seals, whatever it is he imagines himself to be. <laughs> um, do you think if this is somebody who is watching and this is what his dream is to do in life, do you think he would call them FNGs? Uh, if this is somebody who is watching who maybe never tried out and failed, he tried out, he was there and he tried that and he failed, might that guy call him FNGs? If he's, if he's jealous? Exactly, if he does, exactly. Let's say so this is somebody who is bitter who tried out and failed. Yeah, now we would get more to, to words like FNGs, right? Suckers, yeah, yeah, he's, he's bitter, he failed, so now he's going to be describing this in a much more derogatory sense. Notice how just the way we change the few words, how this person is describing what they're looking at, is telling us about their emotional state, about their experience, about their background. All right, part three. This is especially useful when we need to uh, give information about uh, where a character is or who they're meeting with, uh, either when they're meeting for the first time and you want something efficient, or your main character is meeting side characters and you really don't have time to go into a full background and to stop the story to give this all of these details about you know, Mrs. Smith and why she's there. So, uh, and you need a quick and efficient way to really uh, get the reader to know the important aspects without stopping the story. And the, the first time I encountered this, uh, this also doubles for using objects when you're describing setting. Uh, when I was writing my first book, and I, was say, I sent my chapter to a critique partner, and um, my main character is a fantasy, my main character is in basically fantasy boarding school equivalent, military boarding school. And my critique partner said, well, I, d I know her room just looks, I just see white walls, you know, what's, what's her room like? And I'm like, who cares? I mean, really, in what, in what universe does it matter what her bedspread looks like? And the answer was, well, if her bedspread is the standard issue military bedspread, then it doesn't. But if she happened to bring her own pink furly bedspread, then, well, that does tell us something about her. So this isn't about describing every object in a room or every piece of setting or every piece of um, physical or clothing description that your character or side character has. This is about finding those unique pieces that tell us something about the character's background or personality or setting. So for example, your character detective walks into a house, and it's Mrs. Smith's house, and only adults live in that house. Except there's an untouched corner in the living room where there is um, a bunch of soft toys and an unused rocking horse. Yeah, or a, a child's room 
that looks still a little messy. And the date of the last piece of paper with homework is five years ago. So, grieving parent, yeah. There is a, uh, there's a, there's a story there for why an all adult household might have a child's room with everything untouched. On the shelf, what if you walk into a, you know, a child's teenager's room and the entire, you know, there's a big shelf and it's all covered with football trophies. Right, gives you an idea of who this, you know, who this teenager, what, what he's into, what he likely does. All right, now imagine you walk into a similar looking room, except all the trophies are broken and they are all lying in a heap in the corner and instead there's a handicap ramp leading into the room. Yeah, life changing injury. You see how we, all we did was walk into a room and look around. And suddenly we can get, um, we can get information about what's going on. All right, how, what might I use uh, if I wanted to show that somebody's having financial difficulties? You can just shout out and I'll repeat. Past due bills. Objects in disrepair. What is it? Empty fridge. Perfect. I love that. How about somebody has uh, somebody in the house or that person has cancer? Look, lots of medical supplies around, maybe like a hospital bed down on the first floor. What? Oh, sign on the door saying oxygen in use, no smoking. Mm -hmm. Ooh, say that again. Long hair in the bathroom trash can. I can't hear you. Somebody said, I'm sorry, somebody said something. Okay. Pain ribbons? Oh, pink ribbons. Yeah, pink ribbons. Mm -hmm. How about an obsessive long distance runner? A hundred pairs of running shoes. I'm curious, oh, Ben Gay, I, I, do you think those shoes, are they organized? Are they in a heap? Are they? They're organized. They're, they're organized, but, but they're dirty. Yeah, I'm, only, he's only got seven pairs, mind you, right? So they're, they're dirty. Do dirty shoes tell us more than clean shoes? Well, well, I guess tell us something different than clean shoes. If there were 100 pairs of clean shoes, Running sneakers, I'd be thinking something else. I mean, maybe if they're running a business. I, I don't know what I'm thinking, but, um, but bibs? Oh, they might see bibs. Yeah, yeah. Medals. Oh, reflective gear. Mm -hmm. Oh, m m yeah, m massage things. I'm wondering how obsessive, how would we show that this is this person's entire life? Books, magazines, it's not just, right, it's not just three pairs of shoes or seven pairs, but there are hundreds, and there are magazines all around, yep. Oh, a whole row of medals, they are everywhere, yeah. Oh, this thing's, oh, I love using all the sounds, yes. In fact, you walk in, and the first thing is you are smelling like, Shoes, and you're you're expecting there is like some teenager who forgot their football gear in the living room, and instead you discover like no, that's a hundred pairs of dirty learning shoes that are still over there, and that's when you kind of get her. I do. Do you, I think you've gone into a little obsessive mode, right? It's to a point where your house smells. The shoes are taking over everything. And everywhere you look, there is some homage to the fact to running. And that's how we went from, from you know, a healthy runner to somebody who is all right. There is, we, we've crossed the line into obsession here. I have a neighbor who actually didn't like Oh, no, we. And I just realized just now why he always leaves his door propped open. Oh, I, uh, <laughs> 
more of you. Uh, we have somebody whose neighbor is just like this, and uh, there was an epiphany as to why the door is left open. Um, so I am very glad that our fictional description actually led back to a recognition of a real person, <laughs> right? Uh, funny and cute, but think about this in writing. If you can have a few sentence sketch that the reader in their mind can extrapolate to a real person sketch or somebody they know, think of how powerful that is as a tool, of how efficient that is as a tool for you to use. OK, you knew this was coming. This is our last one. Pick something in your character's history and describe it, uh, describe setting or object, and let's see if we can figure out something about your character based on how um, a, some objects or a room or a setting. Um, go ahead. All right, let's come back. All right, is, is somebody, you're, you'll share for us? I would love to, go ahead. So, um, can you speak into the Yes, a photo of James, her husband, uh, in his police uniform on a shelf. Small family photo in the corner taken with young children. Candle next to photo, M-A-D-D. -D. Well, there's again, struck driving, ribbon. Stuck to the picture as well. Ooh, stuck to the picture as well. All right. What do we, th what do we think? Cool. So, so, somebody got killed by a drunk driver, uh, passed away. Every, uh, who, who passed away? The husband? Now, we probably, how could we, without saying, if I just walked into a room, I wouldn't know that that's a husband. How might, I sh how might we show that it's a husband? A what, what was it? A wedding picture. A wedding picture, that could be, right? A wedding picture and children. A small family photo, you could see that the same, the same individual in the small family photo. What? A wedding ring, yeah. Candle, that really match. Somebody else? Yes. Hello, evil chihuahua. An old door lays across two sawhorses to create a large work area in the back of the garage. On top are scattered paints, brushes, and charcoals. There's no chair, but a garbage can sits just below with several balled up papers inside and a few more nearby that missed the mark. Ooh, I like. All right, what do we have? What is it? So, no, 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 what, what, what do we know about we just, what would, the scene that we saw. Who, who lives here? An artist lives there? How do we know, who's not happy with their work? How, is, how do we know that she's not happy with her work? All the balled up papers, so, that are thrown. In fact, you gave, you said that all miss the mark. Looking, you, looking at it, right, we wouldn't, that's a little, telling, right? Because if I just walked into a room, I don't know that it's because they missed the mark. However, oh, they missed the mark to the trash can. Oh, okay, so, so all right, got it. So it looks, so it's a, so actually that would be interesting. Uh, is it a trash can that was overflowed? But no, this is somebody who's throwing stuff and missed, okay. So there, there is their self-esteem high or low? Low, all right. Um, what if I wanted to show, what if this had been an artist who, I mean, they do lots of things and they throw out things that they're trying that might have not worked, but how might I show, let's say this person, this artist, um, everything is the same except they have lots of self-confidence and they actually, it's just that they r draw and try out a lot of things before, you know, they have their final one. There's, how might the space look different? They're, they might have art, artwork that they do like on the walls. This carefully ar arranged stack. Um, I guess it depends. It's, the, uh, carefully arranged is also a personality trait. It might be that their stuff is all over the place. But it would, you're right, is if we walked in and saw paints and supplies all arranged in clean lines, 
it would tell us something different than if we walked in and there are, you know, there are pictures are all over the wall still, but everything in your, like, is you're trying to not step into paint as you are walking in and it looks like a passport it might be in danger of falling into a can of paint, right? That gives us a very different mental image. Oh my, I'm getting an end? Aww. But I wanted to hear somebody else's. Can I, can I listen to one more? One more, all right. An old print book of the art of war, pages coming out of the binding, lay open on a chipped coffee table. The refrigerator rattled and wheezed. On the counter lay the newest model Viper machine pistol. Ooh, newest model Viper. All right, who lives here? An assassin? Somebody in the military? Well, actually, how that, so how is, it could be somebody legitimately in the military or an assassin. How could a setting show the difference? Art, art of war is more of a, it makes you think more military strategy? What would make you think more assassin? Newest model? Militaries don't get newest models. <laughs> More money? Yeah, maybe it's a really expensive place. Like, super expensive. Everything around it is super expensive. Co oh, common coffee is a high-end pistol. All right, think about it, how precise you want. You think about all of these things we could possibly play with. I have to stop asking because they're going to do bad things to me and... There's already a pistol in the works. Thank you for coming, guys.